So to commemorate this major 500th anniversary, we have brought to New York the monumental, extremely rare extant painting by Leonardo. And this is, of course, his unfinished Saint Jerome praying in the wilderness, which is a very, very special loan from the Vatican Museums. And the Met owes, and I particularly, we owe profound thanks to Dr. Barbara Jatta, director of the Vatican Museums, and Guido Cornelius here to represent Barbara. I have known Guido since we were at Ragazzi, 1990 <laughs> may have been when we met. Um, so this exhibition of Leonardo Saint Jerome at the Met represents more than three decades of friendship and rich collaborative projects between the Met and the Vatican Museum. The concept for the Met's exhibition of Leonardo Saint Jerome has been to create a chapel-like sanctuary in order to heighten the profound contemplative dimension of the painting that Leonardo himself intended. The Vatican Museum Saint Jerome is the most personal and intensely spiritual devotional painting extant by Leonardo's hand. Leonardo chose instead to portray the saint in an in intimate scene of reverie, highlighting the private mysticism of Jerome's life, rather than his more public importance for the history of the Catholic Church. The scene depicts St. Jerome as a hermit in the desert, according to the 13th century text or the golden legend. The penitent St. Jerome, aged, gaunt, and nearly toothless, kneels in the act of praying and beating his breast with a rock in front of a cave in a rocky landscape. And St. Jerome directs his gaze at a crucifix, crucifix which is barely outlined within the cave at the upper right in the painting. And reclining before the saint is the magnificent tame lion, my favorite part of the picture, <laughs> his companion in the desert and a central figure in the story of St. Jerome's life according to the golden legend. So Leonardo began painting the St. Jerome around 1482-83, but left it unfinished at the time of his death in 1519. And he worked on the Vatican St. Jerome during the years of his most passionate search for the seat of the human soul. Let me emphasize that in his lifetime, Leonardo was famous for working very slowly and for not finishing his projects, especially his paintings. This drove his patrons to despair. <laughs> the patron and general circumstances of Saint Jerome's production are not known. This is another characteristic of Leonardo's working practice. He's a little helter-skelter. Um, but always brilliant. He picked and chose what concerned him most. The execution of the painting is therefore quite uneven. Leonardo developed some passages of the painting with great attention and with much precise detail, especially the head, the neck, and shoulders of the saint. Leonardo was particularly interested in creating an anatomically correct design for Saint Jerome's ascetic body and Leonardo modeled the saint's right lower leg with great three-dimensionality. The elegant silhouette of the reclining lion seems now especially powerful because there is little modeling beyond the outlines, and Leonardo added color mainly in the upper left portion of the composition where you see greenish-bluish pigment, and a close examination of the paint surface, as Max has mentioned, reveals the presence of Leonardo's fingerprints in the upper left portions of the composition. Leonardo used his fingers here to distribute the pigments and create a soft focus effect in the sky and landscape. And this again is something that Leonardo does in pretty much all his paintings, finished and unfinished. Few paintings in the history of the Western art can elicit such powerful psychological reaction from the viewer as Leonardo St. Jerome praying in the wilderness. For the religious Renaissance patron or patrons who commissioned the Vatican St. Jerome from Leonardo, the painting was probably intended as an aid in prayer and meditation.